Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome to my channel here on The Villages. Now, if some of you don't know, I started this channel from my very first phone call to The Villages. So if you're kind of new to The Villages type thing, you may want to go back to the first one. I'll put the link up top so you can see it. And it's actually my first phone call to the salespeople at The Villages. And I'm basically chronicling the whole thing up until this point. And what the quick tips are about are things that people in the villages may want to know or how to do or general information. And it could be anything from bed types to insurance to what I'm going to do today, and that is install a video doorbell. So make sure you subscribe, and I'll say thank you for doing that. And definitely please hit the like button because it really helps out with getting this and other videos out there on the channel. And I do think they help. I do wanna say I'm going to be doing, as I am going through Medicare right now, I'm going to bring in a broker uh, in the very near future to talk about uh, Medicare and what happens as you approach that 65. Now, I'm not a specialist in this. That's why I brought somebody that is in on it. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things that are eye openers and some of the mistakes that I made, I'm going to tell you about, which I'm in the middle of right now. But hopefully I get it all straightened out um, by next month, which is June. And I will, I'll be an old fart, I guess, 65 and on Medicare. Anyway, let's get started on this one. So let's talk about doorbells for a second. What I'm going to do today before I get started is I decided on this doorbell in this company and I'm going to tell you why. And that doesn't mean it's the best because it's individual type selections for different people. But I'm going to tell you why this company and uh, why I selected this doorbell. And I'm also going to show you that no matter what doorbell you selected, especially here in the villages, that there's a couple of things you need to consider before you just start to wire it in. So this is... The company right here, this is the box, and the name of the company, now you may not have heard it, but it's it's Oofy or Efi or Uffy or whatever. I wish I'd just named the thing Sam or whatever. And as you can see, oops, wrong finger. It has, it's hard to do this backwards, but two cameras, one there and one there, and the doorbell, and we're gonna unbox this in a second. And then I'm gonna tell you what this sucker is because no matter what doorbell, you may want to get one of these. So let's talk about why I decided this. First of all, this is the brand that I decided to use for actually all of my cameras in the house. And the reason why is I wanted the house to be self-contained. In other words, all the information is stored at my house. Also, my outdoor cameras that I have, and I'll put links to this uh, down below, but I'm going to do a video on everything that I've done to make my house, I call it kind of smart. Um, I, I don't want to go whole hog and go crazy on this, but I, I'm not here all the time, so I want to be able to control things from home. And if you haven't seen it, I did one on the garage door opener, a quick tips. So I'll put the link up above or towards the end or below, you can see that one. But so here's the general concept of this. I'm going to install this and I'm going to bring you along on that so you can find out what that other box is and then show you how it all turns out and we'll kind of decide together how easy it was or whether I just couldn't do it at all. I bought this. It is, so there's two general types you can get. You get one that works off of batteries and you can get one that's wired and they each have their benefits and their problems. You... Also with this, this has a dual camera. Now you say, why do you have a dual camera? Well, this also has facial recognition on it. So in other words, you can put a face on there and instead of it just saying, oh, you're, um, there's somebody at the door, if it recognizes the face by the image that you put in there, it'll say, oh, Bob's at the door. And you can actually talk to Bob through the, the unit. It also has a bottom camera that looks downward 
that is there for packages. Now, we get a lot of stuff uh, from Amazon, obviously, but the nice part about this is it identifies, supposedly, we'll see, a package and tells you that a uh, package has been delivered. It also will let you know if the package is there if you get a porch pirate that walks in, tries to grab it, and take off with it. So those are a couple of things. It also stores the data locally on the doorbell itself. So obviously it would just, if somebody stole that doorbell, this particular doorbell, I guess, and we'll find out towards the end, I guess the information would go with it. It's stored on a little card, which you can control from your phone. But with this company, you also have the option to store things in the cloud. So if you really don't care about that, you don't have to store it in the cloud. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna unbox this, then I'm gonna go out and install this, and I'll try to keep it brief, and at the end, figure out whether it's worth it or not, and um, how hard it actually was to install it. I don't think it's going to be very hard, because this company, so far with the cameras that I've installed, are is extremely simple. And I'm not gonna cover all the cameras right here that I have, in, just the doorbell, but I'm going to eventually do a video of all of the cameras and alarms and type of stuff that I put in my house from the garage door opener to the dish, the, not the dishwasher, the washer and everything else. So anyway, here we go. Let's go ahead and unbox this. You're gonna do this live al along with me, so I may stumble through this. This is, uh, this is the camera right here. And to give you an idea for sure how big it is, there's my iPhone. And it's about, so that's about the size of that. One camera. Then there is also this right here, which this feels kind of like a heat sink kind of thing. And this is also a wedge so that when it's mounted on the door, if it's mounted to the side of the door or whatever, I guess we'll find out, but it tilts it out so it has a better, a better view. And I do believe that this actually, yes, this right here, this the camera that's down here can also be moved around a little bit so you can do some finer adjustments on it. It's kind of nice, nice packaging. Uh, this is obviously to <clears throat> do some programming, I guess, or updating. Oh, no, no, no. It's, hang on. I don't know what I'm talking about yet because I haven't opened it. Um, this is, I guess, for different types of plugs if you need it. Mounting hardware for to go into your wall. This, I know this right here is um, to release the camera so you can pull the, the camera off. And so you have to do a little bit of wiring and that's what these are for. And we'll find out what they are in a second, but basically, uh, oh, there's still more stuff. Oh, here we go. Forgot about this part. This is the, the wireless doorbell. So obviously, depending on what part of the world you buy this from, this simply goes on here. I shouldn't say simply that simply. Okay, it's supposed to be simple. All right, it, w it was simple. This goes on there and then this is takes the place of your actual doorbell because remember you're gonna to have to remove your doorbell, your original doorbell because it is where the wires come through to power it. So that's about it. Now, here's something you need to know and I'll show you what the box is for here. Hang on a second. All right, I was a typical guy, I admit it. <laughs> I opened up the box even more, pulled this out, so make sure you don't do the same thing. And in there, 
There are a few more things in there. One of those is kind of important, and that's the um, mounting. Um, it's kind of like a template. There's also uh, this camera uh, or sticker, you know, let them know. And there's, okay, I know I'm, I'm not the, uh, I'm a guy, so there's the directions. And that's what we're going to get started on now. And well, before I do that, I want to show you something. Let me bring this up because this is kind of important. Um, it is, just so you know, right now, let's see, this is towards the end of May, and it is actually on sale now for $169 on Amazon. I actually paid, as you can see right there, $199. And um, so I guess if you order it soon, I will put the link down below and it is on sale for $169. But right here, I want to show you, this right here is kind of important. And the this is the power that the unit needs. So 16 to 24 volts and 30. And it actually says if you go in to the um, UV manual, the, the other manual, it says that you can actually have higher than 30. So that's what this is all about. And I'll put this up here. And this is exactly what I got. Got this off of uh, Amazon. And I'll show you what this looks like. And then we're going to start following the directions. So th this is what it looks like. And this is the transformer. And this, if I have it correct, I'm going to take you up into um, my attic where it is. And I think everybody in the village is kind of in the same place. And we're going to go and install this when it says to do that in the directions. But I believe first we're supposed to see whether the doorbell will actually hook up to the Wi-Fi. So let's start reading the directions and get started on it. All right. Step number one, install the Oofy app. So that's pretty easy. That's about what it looks like. On to step two. All right. Step number two. Plug the unit into the doorbell, actually into the USB, and you'll get a red light at first, and then it'll turn green. And then you're supposed to go to the app um, right here, and these are some of the cameras that I already have on here. And you click on this little plus button up. All right, stop the tape, because... It it, it is not confusing, but it is so step-by-step. Step. Once you get started on this, you end up scanning the doorbell. There's a sk little scan bar on the back of this. I'm not going to go through this whole thing or make you sit through it. Then you sit there, and it brings up a video that you'll see right here. It walks you through everything from turning off the power, your circuit breakers, um, so it, it, let me get, turn this off. It goes through this detailed, um, instructions and then you can skip over that video and then they put even more detailed instructions, uh, past that. And you also have detailed instructions on here which kind of go along with the movie and also go along with the detailed instructions on the app. And then actually what you end up doing is, I guess for part of the security, is they end up sending you um, a barcode. And you actually tell the camera to take a picture of that barcode. And then you'll end up getting a blue light. And then the unit is now hooked up to your Wi-Fi. So let's go and now that I went through that whole thing, you can tell how easy it is. And it, believe, believe it or not, if you can believe this already, this is already sending me a human alert from my doorbell. So it's looking at me right now and going, you have a human. So now we know this is definitely working. Now I'm just going to go mount it 
and then we'll kind of have some fun and check out and see whether it works or not. Let's go through a little bit of the mounting and I'll just bop through that really quick and go up into the attic and show you the transformer that I'm talking about so they can get it hooked up. First thing we need to do in this procedure, and I'm gonna jump through these things really quick. This by no means is meant to be a full, this is how you do it type of thing. And if you feel uncomfortable with any of this, you need to go get an electrician. But make sure you hang on till the end because I'm gonna show you about that transformer and where it is. But first thing we need to do is turn off the power to the system that runs the low voltage, which runs the doorbell. And why? Because we're gonna actually have to put in, I'll show you in a second, a jumper cable. So you can tell that it's out because this is a new tone and there is no electricity to light it up and it doesn't chime. So we know we have the right bell. Next thing we're going to do is head up here. And what we're going to have to do here, and I'll show you really quick, <clears throat> is this is the doorbell. Take this off. And these are the two wires that run into the doorbell. So in other words, you just connect the circuit here when you push your doorbell outside. And what we're going to do is, remember they had, the, when I showed you that, we had the little jumper cables and we're just going to put a jumper across there because we need the power going to the new doorbell that we're putting outside. Now, what I've done, and it took about 30, 30 seconds at the most to do this, I put this jumper on there. Hopefully you can see that. It's right there and it's jumped between this. It says trans and front. That's what you wanna do is jump in between these two. And the reason basically we're doing this is because the doorbell out there needs a little more power and this will help to get that power out. Remember, make sure to turn off the uh, circuit breaker outside before you start this. And then you can just, uh, oh, and you do not take off the old wires and then just simply replace that back on. And that part is done, that was an easy one. I'm outside right now and I have removed the doorbell. So in case you've never done anything like this, these are the two wires coming out of here. And once I unscrewed it, I put these back in there. And if you screw them in just enough to grab a hold, you can probably pull the old, there you go. You can pull these out with your hands. Now, luckily my holes are so close, this one and this one, it looks like I'll probably be able to use the same holes that I did uh, before, but the, the, the drill I have to drill is a little bit larger, so I'll probably wobble them out and put some silicone in there and it should be okay. So you disconnect this. Now, what I did was I actually hooked the camera up because remember, the camera's already working. So what I did was I hooked the camera up and I kind of put it, just held it up here on this mount to make sure that it was close. And it's, it looks like it's gonna get a good shot of the area. I may have to put a shim under it so that it catches part of this under there, but that's it. All right, next thing we did that was just a minor thing is you have to, because they're bare wires on here, you wanna be careful. These are the wires that came out of the house and they give you these little splices to put on there. I actually think you could probably just hook the wires direct, but I'm doing it like the directions say. <clears throat> Put those, and now I'm gonna attach the doorbell. One more thing really quick. There was this little piece of paper right here. It's a, like a cover, and this is kind of like a material that works along with the heat sink. And so when you put this up, it goes right here because I can feel that's where this is starting to get warm. So you wanna make sure that you do connect that. Basically, that seems to be it. And there is the doorbell. Now we just gotta see whether it works or not, but we still have that one more thing in the attic to do yet, I'm pretty sure. So we need that boost in power for the doorbell. It says that it'll actually light up once I turn the power back on, 
but it's not enough power. So it's enough power where it looks like it's working, but not enough power, and we'll see how that goes. Now it's the time for the infamous box. I'm gonna go up into the attic, which I know that's where my low voltage or the transformer is, and we're gonna go change this out. I did try, the doorbell came on, I just wanna make sure you know this. The doorbell came on, it actually cut in and out, which is exactly what they said. Um, if you don't have enough power, it's going to cut in and out. And it would ring saying that I'm there, but it wouldn't show a live picture. So it obviously needs a little bit more power to work, and I'm hopefully this will take care of it. Let's head up into the attic. Yeah, here we go. Now, when you come up here, there's a good chance that your light switch that lights your light up here won't work. So make sure that you bring some type of flashlight or headlamp or whatever um, so you can see. Now, I also have a regular flashlight, but it's a small one. Kind of reminds me that um, Maybe with all the couches and TVs and everything I'm getting, I might be able to uh, go spend a little money on a flashlight. So anyway, here is the unit, and this is what you're looking for right here. And I'll show it to you real quick. And as you can see, it's just two wires going into this. But underneath, down in here, this is actually a box, and it's jumped over from the light switch right there. And it's regular hot wires so you need to be careful and you want to make sure that it's off i have uh, my trusty little to make sure that we have no power going to there and uh, i'm just going to go change this out i'll maybe show you a shot halfway through and then uh, we'll see what happens when we turn back on the power hopefully we don't blow ourselves up this is the new one, and this is the old one. You can see there's um, basically your green, white, and red wires hanging out of this one, and a nut to tighten it down. And if you look, basically you're just swapping out the wire, so this one's basically the same. I just wanted to show you that really quick in case you're wondering how difficult this is. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult, just changing the nuts out, and hooking up the wires. Be back in a second. Again, just installed the new transformer that probably took uh, all of like 20 minutes or so. By the time I was done, there really wasn't anything to do. There was no wire cutting or anything like that. It was really simple. Just kind of replaced the other one. Now, <laughs> now I'm going to turn on the circuit breaker and see whether it was really that easy or not. Um, okay, good part is the light went on upstairs, so that means we have power. Now let's see whether we have power to the camera and the camera's got the blue light and it was kind of funny you can see right on there when I had the other one on uh, earlier it I had my I had my uh, drill sitting down there and it says oh you have a package so it is telling me already that I am standing here and you, so it's saying human in view, and I am moving now. So you can see, I'm gonna turn that off so you don't have to listen to that, but it is working. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna jump inside really quick, button up up there to make sure that we don't have any sparks flying, and I'll talk to you in a second about a couple other things with this camera. This is the moment of the big test. I'm going to take this and I'm going to be the UPS guy and I'm going to drop off a box and I'm, I'm going to use everything that's set out of the factory. So there's absolutely nothing I've changed. This is just the way it works out of the or I hope it works. All right, I am screen recording on my phone. And I have the box. I am walking up to my door right now. And I'll try to make this as real time as I can, match the phone up 
and go ahead and drop the phone. It's already alerted me as to a human, and it's also alerted me, as you can see, that there is a package. Now I'm a porch pirate, and I am headed back in to go steal this package. And it says human at doorbell. I pick it up and it says your package was picked up. So that's pretty cool. Somebody took the package. So we know that works. This is what the app looks like now that it recorded something. And I'm going to open this up. I'll just tap three. And this shows the three alerts that I just got. So this is me coming up to the door and dropping the package. It's already alerted me as to a human. So obviously it's recording a little longer. Let's pause that for a second. And you can also tap the bottom left corner here and it's got a picture of me. It's not the best picture. And it's also got a picture, a close up of the package. Now, it's also right above it at 547 has the package picked up. So let's say this was a porch pirate. This is what we'd see, me sneaking around. <laughs> this is the best I can sneak. I come down, I pick up the package. And that's it. As you saw, it gave me a pretty timely alert. And there's the picture of me picking up the package, a close-up of it. And that's pretty cool. So this is the other one that it took a picture of. That was my first event as a porch pirate. <laughs> that, that was actually kind of fun. It was really easy. Like, like I said in the beginning, you really uh, need to check out the transformer because the, the ones that are in the homes already are, are weak because all they need to do is fire off that, that little doorbell and that's it. So um, make sure you look that up. If you're going to do it, check out if you're going to need that transformer. And also one other thing I did do that I didn't talk about was I got this Wi-Fi extender. I got this more because of the garage door opener. If you've seen that video, if not, I'll put the link right above or down below. It's a automatic garage door opener that if I'm in my golf cart or I'm in my car, as I leave, it'll automatically shut the garage door. And as I come back into the neighborhood, it automatically knows I'm there and it opens the garage door back up. But you might want to check that one out. This was um, fairly easy to install. Um, not, I, I would say if I went right through it without shooting and stuff, maybe an hour and a half at best, and um, yeah, it was kind of, it was easy. So, it, and, and it's a, a one unit thing. Now, like I said before, this is a wired version. So you can also have the option. There's eight gigabytes of storage right in the unit. If you're in total fear of somebody stealing that unit, which would take the eight gigabytes with them if they stole it, I guess. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with it because they can't do anything with it. But you can also have it stored in the cloud. Now, I did look it up. This is the prices now. I'm sure they change all the time. But $2.99 a month for one device. So if you just had the doorbell, it'd be $2.99 a month to store it in the cloud, the information or the video. And I think they have a thing where you can have 10 devices around the house or wherever you have them for $9.99 a month. So $120 a year. I think the first month's free. And that's about it. Um, I can't think of anything else to say. Uh, it was fairly easy to install and it shouldn't take, if you had an electrician or somebody coming in to do it, it shouldn't take them very long. I wouldn't think it shouldn't be very expensive. So far, just a little, I played around with it. It seems really, really easy to use. The big thing is, is there's a lot of variations to this. I, I just did this with the standard, what came out of the box. I didn't change anything. There are so many things you can modify this with. In other words, there's one thing where you can have different settings. If you're away, it gives you different types. And so like if you're not near the area, it gives you different types of notifications. You can talk to somebody while they're standing there and they can talk back to you. 
You can have pre-recorded things. Like in other words, if somebody comes up and picks up the package, pre-recorded stuff to say, hey, put that back down. There's also a new uh, firmware update coming that you can actually, if you remember that video that I had in there, there was kind of looked out and saw part of the neighbor's walkway along the side of their house. So it'll have it so that you can void that out. So it won't give an alert if a human walks by. You can change it so that you can pick up animals. I have that checked off or that's the way it came, not to pick up animals. So a lot of variations and um, something that, that you may want to consider. I, I, I thought it was pretty good for me. The only downfall, I think, is the fact that if you have a power failure, you uh, obviously won't get any information because it's running off of the power. Now, if you had a completely battery-operated unit that also had internal storage right in it, then you might get that information. But uh, basically, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, I will be doing, once I get this, as I call it, my kindness smart house together, I will do a video of everything put together from the washer and dryer that talks to each other to different types of cameras, which I'm pretty much converting everything over to Oofy, just different, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, so that's about it. Anyway, you might want to watch that video. I still have the Medicare video coming up, for, especially for people that are coming up on 65 and some information that I, I have a, uh, a broker coming in to do that, independent broker, so they can do pretty much anything. They can sell anything from the villages to regular Medicare. Anyway, as I always say, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And um, I, I want to big, get, do a big shout out to Bob and Liz for the last one. Thank you so much. And thank you for jumping in and answering a lot of questions people had. I'm going to do a question and answer one really soon. And I'll try to answer a lot of those questions that didn't get answered on there. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And as I always say, I will see you either back here on YouTube or I'll see you down in the villages. Have a great weekend.